when I was 16 and going to prep school, there was a bunch of us who used to go to New York City on the first day of our vacation before fanning out to go to our homes. And in the evening, this bunch of us, we would go out to the gin mill owned by the gangster father of one of us. For, for, see, this was during the Great Experiment, or, or Prohibition, as it was more frequently called. And we would go to the gin mill and we would drink with the grown-ups and listen to jazz. And this one evening, it was a boy was in the bunch of us and see, he was 15 and he had killed his mother with a shotgun some years before. I mean, accidentally, of course, completely accidentally, without even a, an unconscious motivation. I have no doubt about it, none at all. But he came with us and while well, we were ordering drinks and when it came to his turn, <laughs> he said, uh, <laughs> he said, I'll have a burgeon. <laughs> he said, G give me some burgeon, please. <laughs> burgeon and water. <laughs> well, we all laughed. And, but, see, he had blonde hair and, and a face like a cherub. And we were laughing and his, his cheeks grew bright red and the, the color in his neck rose. <laughs> and then the assistant crook who had taken our order, he went to the table next to us and told them what the boy had said. And then they were laughing. <laughs> and then they told more people and the laughter grew. <laughs> More people, more laughter. <laughs> I mean, uh, no one was laughing more than we were, and none more than the boy who had shot his mother. <laughs> I, well, eventually the, the laughter, it became less general, but it, it did not subside, not entirely, for a very long time. <laughs> for, for always at this table or that, someone else would order some virgin and then a new area of laughter would arise. <laughs> we drank for free that night, yeah, and we were bought champagne by the management, the, the gangster father of one of us. <laughs> well, we suffered for it the next day, each of us alone <laughs> on a train going back from New York, each of us with a grown-ups hangover. <laughs> well, that was the grandest day of my life. The following summer, um, with his learner's permit in his pocket and his father to the right in the front seat. The boy swerved to avoid a porcupine and crashed into a large tree. He wasn't killed, of course. And in the hospital, when he had regained consciousness and was out of danger, and when they told him that his father had died, the boy started to laugh. So I'm told. And his laughter grew, and, and it, 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 he wouldn't stop. I mean, it wasn't until after that, until, until his, his consciousness had slipped away from him, that, that the laughter finally subsided, you know, f finally stopped. You know, and w when he had recovered from his injuries enough so that he could be moved without danger should he struggle, they put him in the asylum. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with your soul? For Christ's sake, we could have helped each other, Pop. The world's hard enough, ain't it? I mean, do you know how I feel inside? I feel abandoned. And I was the lucky one. I was the fortunate son. What did you do to me? What have you done to your boys? No, fuck you! You know what I feel like when I see a beggar on the street? I want to beat him to death, because that's me. Pathetically waiting with my fucking cup. But I'm done with that now. I'm done stealing, and I'm done setting fires, and I'm done breaking windows, and now, now I'm gonna stop waiting for you to reach down to me, touch my face. I will never think of you without being shocked by your lovelessness. I'll never think of you without a gasp of wonder. I'll never think of you without some pain. But despite everything, in the face of everything, though it personally shames me to say it, I still have love for you. <laughs>